Hey friends, it's Jasmine, and I hope that you all are doing well. Welcome back. If you are a returning subscriber, it's so good to see you. Your likes and shares, subscribing to this channel really means a lot to me. And if you're a new watcher, a new viewer of my channel, hi. Uh, my name is Jasmine, and I am a practicing witch and a content creator. You can find all of my links down below in the description if you want to check me out on some other social media platforms. I make witchcraft content primarily. We do paranormal investigations and I babble about my experience on the crooked spiral path. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, I highly recommend that you check out some of the other videos here on my channel. Today I really wanted to touch on a topic that I actually made a video about several years ago and that would be the three C's of witchcraft. This is something that definitely has been a concept long before I started calling this the three C's. So I won't take credit for creating this concept. However, the three C's of witchcraft are something very simple um, and kind of a basic fundamental witchcraft practice in my opinion. But it's something that I think even sometimes seasoned witches look over or take for granted. Also, I apologize, you may hear my dogs barking in the background. That is just something that is you're gonna have here on my channel. I'm a dog mom and every time I go to record, I think they get really excited because they think that um, company is coming over. And while there is no company coming over in the physical, sometimes when I'm engaging in anything magical, even like making content like this, they get excited. So, you know, we might have some astral visitors as well. So I did make a previous video actually on this topic, and I will be leaving that video up here on my channel in case you want to go back and watch it or reference that video. I'm going to be talking a lot about some similar things, but also through kind of putting this into practice, I wanted to kind of do an updated version because for my clients that I read for or for witches who, you know, I work with, whether it be in the coven or solid witches, this is a really beneficial practice and it's something that I have referenced time and time again when people are talking to me about some issues that they have coming up in their lives. And I feel like the three C's of witchcraft is something that can benefit all of us um, no matter what your witchcraft practice kind of looks like. And like I said, this is something that like I will not take credit for creating this. So what are the three C's of witchcraft? Well, the first C would be to keep it clean. Keep it clean. And what do we mean by keeping it clean? This means that literally your area should be clean. Now this might translate to like your house, maybe your car, maybe your workspace. Um, this should be clean. It should be tidy. It should be organized. Now, many of us witches are also very neurodivergent sort of people. And I understand that oftentimes our internal landscape can manifest in our external landscape. And what I mean by that is when we are feeling good and centered, oftentimes our spaces will reflect that. And sometimes when we are feeling out of sorts or unbalanced, our spaces will also reflect that. And as within, so without this sort of occult philosophy, your surroundings affect you even if they are your own surroundings, like your physical house affects you. Your house has a spirit in of itself. And if you are not providing for that spirit and taking care of that spirit by keeping things clean, by keeping things organized, then you are doing a disservice to that spirit and it will cause negative effects on your psyche. And oftentimes witches can kind of get caught in this cycle of, demotivation um, where their physical space becomes unmanageable and the idea of even tackling their physical space feels very overwhelming and I understand that and I'm not 
talking about these three C's, like I'm an expert and I live these three C's, you know, every single day and that I'm supposed to be some kind of role model because I'm not trying to put that message out there. But what I am saying is that these three C's have greatly benefited my life and my practice. And, you know, I am someone with a Prada handbag of mental health things. So I understand that not all of these are going to be achievable every day, but I feel like we should strive for them. Now, clean and organized might also look different from person to person. I'm not insinuating that your apartment or your house needs to look like a picture out of like a Better Homes and Garden magazine. By no means am I saying that. But there is also a difference between lived in, messy, and filthy. There's a huge difference between that. When it comes to the first C of keep it clean, you have to kind of find your own center with that and what clean looks like for you. And really be honest with yourself. Look at your bedroom, look at your home office or your living room, look at your car. And is that how you want to keep it or have things been getting out of hand and out of sorts? Because when they do get out of hand, we're kind of creating spaces for poltergeists to kind of manifest in where, you know, which is oftentimes we turn homes into a haunted house and we need to make sure that we're living in a haunted house for the right reasons and with the best spirits possible. I know that for me, when my home is in disarray, when I have dishes in my sink and, you know, laundry piled up and um, just whatever, right? Like I feel out of sorts. I feel like discombobulated in a way. I feel like the feng shui of my home is not necessarily in rhythm. And, you know, as someone also who struggles with control and like obsessive compulsive tendencies, it can be hard too to not fall into the extreme of constantly cleaning or beating yourself up if you're not cleaning. There's been times in my life where I have company coming over and I feel the need to scrub all of my toilets and vacuum and dust and mop and do all these things before I have company over. And while that's something that I appreciate as someone who keeps hospitality as a virtue, sometimes that can also become very toxic and that sort of behavior cycle can also be damaging. So the first the first C, the first pillar of this, keep it clean. You have to kind of find your own sort of rhythm with what clean looks like for you and then strive to stay as best you can in balance with this virtue of keeping it clean. Now, I want to say too, a good altar, a good working altar sometimes does get messy. So that incense ash or um, spell remnants, I'm not necessarily damning that or saying that your altar shouldn't look like it's been worked at. Your altar should, right? I'm talking about your home. I'm talking about your, your place, your workspace, your living space. I'm talking about your physical self as well. Like you need to wash and clean your body. Um, you need to shower. You need to practice good hygiene you know, clean yourself, wear some nice perfumes, some deodorant, wash your hair, um, brush your teeth, take care of your physical vessel. You need to be doing those sort of things as well, because as within, so without, your inner is going to be reflective of your outer. The next C in this is keep it cleansed. So we're kind of taking the same sort of idea of keeping it clean, keeping things organized, keeping things tidy, taking care of our physical space. But now we're taking this idea and sort of putting it into the astral in the sense of keeping your space cleansed, keeping it clear of energy, um, whether that be clearing yourself routinely, like that might look like taking monthly cleansing spiritual baths, that might look like practicing some floor wash or door wash techniques while you are keeping it clean. So, you know, when you're cleaning your house, maybe instead of just using regular mop water, you also add a little bit of magic through essential oils or your own floor wash herbal blend into your mop water. Maybe instead of just using the regular degular, you know, carpet cleaner, you add in some magical oils and herbs into that carpet cleaner to kind of cleanse, protect, banish any unwanted energy from your home and from your space. This is keeping it cleansed. This would be also banishing, cleansing, 
you know, warding, protecting, that all falls under kind of the third or the second C, keeping it cleansed. When it comes to home wards and home magical maintenance, that's kind of the key word that I encourage witches to look at is it's about maintaining. So you're not going to do like a home protection spell and live in this home for 30 years and that's the only home protection ward or spell that you've ever put up. You should be keeping somewhat of a catalog or a journal in your book of shadows of, you know, when did you put those wards on your doormats and make those devil traps? When did you put those wards on those doors? How often do you floor wash? How often do you door wash? How about some of those other wards that maybe you have out in your garden or on your windows or those reflective convex or concave mirrors that you point outward? All of those things, you should keep your own sort of record of it. And I can't tell you what that rhythm has to look like because you as a witch need to find your own rhythm for how to understand what makes sense for you. But if you do the first C of cleaning everything and keeping things clean and organized, and then you also spiritually cleanse things and banish unwanted energy, those are things that are going to be falling in rhythm between those two C's. They work together. And that takes us to our third C, which is keeping it consecrated. So consecration is basically making something powerful, imbuing it with your power, imbuing it with your magic, blessing it in whatever holy names that you work with, even if that's your own name. Magical tool is not a magical tool simply because it's a tool. Um, a wand, an athame, a kerfang, a sting, a dagger, a staff, um, an altar, pentacle, candles, even in candle magic, right? Like we don't necessarily just burn a green candle and expect money to come our way. The same can be said with your magical objects and your home, your car, your space, yourself. You need to consecrate these things in holy names, even if that's your own name or the name of your ancestors, the name of your deity, the name of magic itself. Imbue that with power. So this might look like putting travel protection amulets or wards inside of your car, hanging it on your rear view mirror. This might look like enchanting your home and creating nexus points and wards in your home to bless it and protect it and amplify the magic that you create within it. This might look like wearing enchanted jewelry to bring forth different magical intentions, whether it be compelling and commanding or attracting good luck and fortune and good money or you know, charging your physical vessel with good health or whatever, like the list can continue. But you should also be consecrating this space, making it magic, giving it intention and feeding it. I feel like as witches, it is so important for us to continuously work these three C's of the craft. And throughout like many different magical systems and traditions, this concept that I did not come up with Okay, I, I, I did not create the three C's. This is something that is found in many occult traditions, many magical orders, and is kind of requested and even required sometimes of practitioners to partake in and to follow and use as a limpatios or a guideline. So I'm not saying that if you happen to drop the ball in one of these categories that like you're a trash witch. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we should strive our best to keep our spaces clean and ourselves clean, to keep our spaces and ourselves cleansed of unwanted energy and to also consecrate with power ourselves and our spaces. And I think that this is a topic that can definitely be twisted, whether it's taken too far in like the obsessive compulsive direction or whether it's twisted in like this ableist rhetoric of the three C's are discriminatory, which I don't feel that they are. I know that some people really find this topic to be hard or to be triggering. And that's not necessarily my intention. My intention here is to provide something that can give you a little bit of structure when it comes to empowering yourself in your space. And this is something that I have found for myself personally has been really, really helpful because I have noticed as a neurodivergent person myself, when I allow my spaces to just kind of become disheveled or when I'm not taking care of myself properly, I feel worse. And then I get trapped in the cycle of 
continuously feeling worse because the idea of correcting it is so overwhelming and I don't know where to start. And that's kind of the thing sometimes is just starting because once you get started, it can be a lot easier to kind of keep it going and correcting like a big overflow of negative energy can be a lot more difficult than maintaining that energy out of your auric field. It's a lot easier to do little things every day to keep your space clean and yourself clean, to keep your space cleansed and yourself cleansed, and to consecrate your space and yourself. It's a lot easier to do little things every day to maintain that than to completely ignore and disregard these principles and virtues and then allow it to sort of fester for a month, three months, and then have to correct all of that. That can be really, really overwhelming. And if you need to seek some sort of professional care to help you, that's okay too. You know, there are professional cleaners, right? There are mental health therapists that can kind of come in and help sort of unpack some of this stuff with you. And even you can hire people to help you. If that means that you need to hire like a home maid to come in twice a month and mop your floors and do kind of some maintaining things, cleaning cabinets, cleaning the dust, the dust boards or whatever, that's fine. That's okay. You have to find your own sort of rhythm is my point. I would love to know how you all feel about sort of this aspect and this virtue of the three C's. Um, what does that mean to you? What does that look like for you? How do you keep things clean? And what does clean look like? What does clean mean? Um, how do you keep things cleansed? How do you cleanse yourself and your space? And also, how do you consecrate things? What does that look like to you? I would love, love, love to hear about how you personally uphold these three C's if you do. And if this is not something that's for you, that's fine too. I hope that you all have enjoyed this video. I've been really wanting to kind of remake the three C's video and talk about it a little bit more um, and clarify some things. I've gotten some feedback from you all and also from my friends here in real life, from clients that I've worked with, because this is something that I often prescribe in my witchy consultations a lot. And it's something that is, I think, very simple, but oftentimes kind of overlooked or not really given any real structured thought about. So yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you are interested in any sort of witchy, ritual, magical consultations, I will be offering consultations down below in my links. So make sure to check out my links down below if you're interested in taking any of my magical, occult, or divinatory courses. Those are available on Patreon, as well as any early access release or exclusive release content that I make. If you'd like to reach out to me directly, I encourage you to reach out to me via Instagram. Um, you can find that down below. It's just Jasmine Ambrosia. And until next time, blessed be, and I'll see you in hell. Mm -hmm.